I want to share a few ideas that come up from, as Marcel very kindly referred to, the work that we're doing. And I'm referring in particular to a network of European scholars and practitioners thinking uh, about a number of things. In particular, we started thinking about interdisciplinarity as a problematic and the importance of being able to produce knowledge in a different way, notably or namely um, by combining, integrating the insights and the worldviews and the um, theories that come with disciplinary, uh, from disciplinary perspectives. We then moved on to transdisciplinarity, which is something that Marcel was very kindly referring to, which is how do we relate to society? But in a slightly different way, perhaps, than Marcel was thinking, in the sense that transdisciplinarity is that effort. And this is the European that use of the word, note, because the US uses it differently. Um, it's when you try to open up the arena of who has the legitimacy to define and produce knowledge, yes? So it is not only scholars, but it is also civil society, and therefore completely changing the paradigm of what knowledge production in academia could be, or ought to be, some would say. From there, we moved on to thinking about the future of universities and what that might or ought to look like. Um, and I just want to share in five minutes uh, um, a few of the thoughts that we, that we are working with uh, within Intrepid. But I want to start with a quote. Because yesterday, we did talk a little bit, in my view, not enough, about something that some of you have referred to as the Anthropocene. And there are many definitions of what the Anthropocene is, but I want to offer one to you that is not often quoted, but I think is the best one. The present evolutionary crisis we are facing arises from a disparity between our limited faculties, the mental, ethical, and spiritual, and the technical and economical means at our disposal. And Marcel has referred a lot to technology, so I think he made a very good point about our capabilities there. Without an inner change, we can no longer cope um, with the gigantic development of the outer life. So when we talk about the Anthropocene, we basically say humans have become powerful enough to be a power of nature and changing nature itself. What that definition disguises is, number one, the incredible inequality of that impact and who actually has that power, who actually damages the planet to that level. And so we need to be careful with those words. But secondly, I think that this quote points to the essence of the problem. It's not that our technology, that we have become a power of nature, it's that our mental, ethical, and spiritual um, capabilities are out of sync with our power. And that, the reason I'm quoting this, and the reason I'm, I'm highlighting this, is that this is where I think universities have failed, and this is where I think universities ought to step up urgently. Um, Otto Schirmer from MIT um, has a wonderful way of describing what universities should look like. And he refers to, by echoing the inscription that used to be on Athens Academy many thousand years ago, he says, let no one enter Academy who cannot see that the issues outside are a mirror of the issues inside. It used to say, let no one enter who cannot, who does not know about mathematics and geometry. <laughs> now, what I want to suggest is that what, um, and this is a slightly provocation, I guess, but I do want to set the, the, the argument in this way. You, academia, universities, by and large, have become part of the problem, not the solution. So the challenge that I think they ought to face is 
how do, actually, how do they become part of the solution actively, purposefully, and with intent? Uh, this is a quote from a futurist, Slaughter, who says, despite the deteriorating global outlook, universities largely remain caught up in an earlier instrumental growth paradigm that brought us to this extremity in the first place. Another way of talking about the Anthropocene in a different way. Knowledge, and I, I think that um, we somehow forget how important our role is, but I want to say this in a humble way, if I can. It is important, not because we are important, but because what we produce, knowledge, ideas, are important. And to use another expression that I think is very effective, we colonize the future with ideas, with knowledge. We frame the future. If we invest, <coughs> to link to what Marcel was saying, if we invest, as we do in the EU, 95% of our resources for research in science and technology, or technoscience, and the remaining five in the social sciences, the humanities, and the arts, we make a choice. We are colonizing the future, and we are stating that technoscience has an absolute priority. I think the percentage allows me to use that word. It is not a question whether we need or we do not need technology. We are in a world that has made that choice, or at least we are in that direction. But what I want to raise is linking to the first quote that I made, which, by the way, is authored by a gentleman here next to me. Um, the point is that technology is power and responsibility, and we need to have the skills the mental, the spiritual, and the ethical skills and capabilities to manage that in a way that is for the good of all life, humans and non-humans. I want to quote another scholar that is very dear to me and on whose shoulders I've stood for a long time, Ernst Schumacher, who in 74 wrote, if Western civilization is in a state of permanent crisis, it is not far-fetched to suggest that there may be something wrong with its education. Mankind is in mortal danger, not because we are short of scientific or technological know-how, but because we tend to use it destructively and without wisdom. And so, with Intrepid, uh, uh, which is the, oh, sorry, this was the slide I should have shown you, just to point that it is, it's not that we're not working. This is a slide from the OECD showing the increase in PhD production over the last decade, and showing that it is actually not only the OECD, of course, that is increasing rapidly, but also the rest of the world. So the question is not that we do not have enough knowledge we are at a time in history where we're producing a phenomenal amount of data and knowledge. So why is it that we also have phenomenal challenges in front of us? There is obviously a gap between what we produce, how we think, and what we need to solve. Um, this is just a list of the kind of <coughs> workshops and the conferences that we're running as Intrepid to think about the future of universities. You don't need to look at the detail at all. But this is briefly what we are thinking about in terms of what needs to change and how can universities become part of the solution as opposed to being a significant contributor at times of the problem. Um, what the first is the most important um, as we see it, uh, can the university become, again, a place to question and expose? This refers to basically the significant reductionist tendencies, both ontological and epistemological, of our systems. The narrowness with which we understand the world and the ways of knowing. The overwhelming influence of Western ways of knowing in a world that we have said endlessly yesterday is globalized, interconnected, interdependent. We need to change that. And we need to expose those of you who know about, about discipline, the most powerful discipline on the planet, economics, 
there are several things that need to be exposed about <coughs> ideas, theories, and myths in that discipline, which affect everybody's life. So that's why that is number one and most important. The rest, I don't have time and it's not important. But basically, we, we are proposing that the whole system needs to change all the way to the physical structures of our universities, which reflect everything but interconnectedness and interdependence. They divide. And those of you who work in government know, because we come out of universities divided, huh? and we reproduce those divisions into our ministries, our departments, our directorates. So we do matter, um, in a humble way, I like to say that, but we do matter because ideas matter and knowledge matters. So if, if we can redefine our purpose and re-engage with the idea that we should contribute to wisdom, perhaps we can make a contribution to a more just and sustainable future.